Hello and welcome to the weekend edition. I'm Dr. King. We have a great show lined up for you. It's been an eventful week, man. The London Marathon went down this past Sunday. Alafu, all eyes were on the world record holder, Eliud Kipchoge. The one human being who has ever beaten time. And you know, it's so sad and heartbreaking that some people chose to focus on the fact that he finished eighth, forgetting the achievements he has made. Koi dunia. And after the race, imagine Ki Eliud Kipchoge had to explain his performance. I had a problem with uh, my right here actually blocked all the way, all the halfway. It was really blocked. Basically, 2020 has been both a good year and a bad year for Kipchoge. Now, vile tu Kipchoge alisema masikio ilifungana ika affect mbiu yake. Hapo, hapo nilijua kuna wa Kenya ike, kuna wa Kenya hapa inji ya wana adabu. Hati ya, so masikio ilifungana. That's why I could scare what was in Peter. Very shameless. Now on this, I love a point shared by a trip anajita TJ pale Twitter who say that Eliud Kipchoge needing to explain himself ama to explain what happened in the race, Mazi. Norma, we sometimes place our heroes on such a lofty pedestal and we forget how human they are. Maze, Eliud Kipchoge remains to be the greatest of all time. Maze, congratulations to himself, uh, Kina Bridget Kosge, Vincent Kipchumba, and the entire team that represented Kenya uh, in London. Leo pia tukona shunzito kama kawaida, our guest for this episode is a gentleman who for the longest time I thought is the author of the English Dictionary. He's a distinguished lawyer. He has served as a director of the Kenya Anti-Corruption Commission. Profile yake nikiendelea kuambia it will eat into the whole part of this show, the first part of this show. Why do that and we have him on set? Professor PLO Lumumba is in the house. We'll be talking to him in a bit, but first, this week, NTV revealed the mystery of the source of President Uhuru's shirts. At least per month, we give him a, a good number of shirts, minimum at least six. There is particular people when you wanna 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 say my upper and a shulika calf, another collar, another button stand, another button hole, and at last we get to our final product. Na kila siku tukimona ameva, we are just proud of our product. Tunaomba siku moja angarawa tuite, hata sisi ya tuambia feeling enya na sikianga. Kenyans say they can predict the president's mood every time he steps out in a river text shirt. Unaeza jijazia tu, hii shirt ya ameva, kuna kitu anakuja kuangia na either ilete furaha ama ilete uzuni. Wasi wa NTV LD mazi, Gabriel Kudaka. Of all the people wangeongelea shirt is a president, ni mulamua tu ndio mulipata. Sisi wote tunajua relationship ya mulamua na mashati. Hapo mulichoma. And now that it has been confirmed that the president, <laughs> that mashati is a president, hushonwa na mafundi wa Kenya, we now know why the last time the president was supposed to address the nation on Friday, and the address was pushed to Monday. Nata yu Monday, shati ya kufungua haikuwa imefika ilibidi ya funguwe na suti. Jokes aside though. The president's initiative to buy Kenya, build Kenya, is very noble, especially considering the fact that he is leading by example. Mi pointi meni bamba kwa yu story, niyo mambo ya mood. Kenyans say they can predict the president's mood every time he steps out in a river text shirt. Unajua uneza pata, hiyo ndiyo criteria ya mashati za president kushono. Hello? Hello, mumesema anaogerea nini, diyo nisishone sati siyo hiyo. Hello? Anafugua mashuri ama anafugulia walevi? Mina wana kama ni walevi tuwede na blue. Blue like blue, color blue. Sio blues, blue are this. Now you do realize that these tailors have access to state secrets like the president's body size. Unajua kawaida, anavaa garage. Lakini, hile wiki ya revenue share, ilibidi tumemushonea medium. Sema kukata. Kwanza unajua kuna siku number two, the deputy. Ali itishiwa shati hapa, nika, nika abiwa ati anavaa extra large. Nika shaga. Kwa ni serikali ya jubiri, ni nani mkubwa? Now, fun fact. Watu wamekuwa kithani ni politicians utupima. Kumbe hapa nje kuna wa Kenya wa kawaida wanapima mpaka president. In other news, in his first uh, overseas tour since the COVID-19 pandemic struck, President Uhuru visited France to secure 180 billion shillings funding for infrastructure projects. Getting the money wasn't hard. The task was convincing investors that the money will not be stolen. I'm not going to lie to you. Yes, corruption is still a problem. But I want to guarantee you that we are fighting that problem. We are putting in place mechanisms that are going to ultimately ensure 
that it is much harder for people to engage in corrupt practices. And after we lock up a few individuals, uh, I think even the, the, the sweetness of corruption will also begin to taste very bitter. Now, we are informed that the president had to assure the investors that their money was safe after this video emerged online detailing how the government allegedly supplied the COVID-19 PPEs donated by Jack Ma to needy Kenyans. In other news, Rangols in the Kenyan tea sector has given Tanzania ideas to set up their tea auctions to rival Kenya. While responding to this, the managing director of IATA, that is the East African Tea Trade Association, Mr. Edward Mudibo, responded like the OG. The issue about Tanzania opening could also be an indication of our own uh, creation here. I wouldn't fail to get sleep because their market share is only 3%. We cannot lose sleep. This makes sense. Tanzania has no chance here, Mazi. As of 2017, Kenya had a 25% market share in the tea market. On top of that, Ebu Ongeza ile chai ya traffic offenses na Edgar Obari. Now, we always complain of how corruption is dragging this country behind. But have you ever stopped to think about if vile wa Kenya tumezoya vibaya? Can this country do without corruption? For example... And be very honest, if you got arrested for a traffic offense on Friday, ukienda ndani, utalala mpaka Monday, upelekwe kotu pigwe fainia, say, 10,000 bob. Versus, ama compared to, kupe askari mwenye mekushika, 500 bob, ajifanyata haja wayo na mtu kama wewe. How many Kenyans will go for due process in the name of fighting corruption and being a good citizen? Then, does this then mean that corruption saves time, money, and effort? Ama wacha ni wapati example ingine, when you need a certain document urgently, which procedurally, procedurally will take you like two months to get. If someone offered to get it for you in a day at a small fee, how many of you would wait? Then now, this begs the question of, if it's possible to get the document in a day, does it mean that the system we have promotes corruption? Our guest for this episode has served as the head of the Kenya Anti-Corruption Commission, making him the perfect fit for this conversation. Professor PLO Lumumba joins us on the other end of this break. So see you guys in a bit. Welcome back to the Wicked Edition. I'm Dr. Kingori Villanuambia Shon Zito Sana Show Noma. Our guest for tonight, Spenang Kusemele Kitu, a person who needs no introduction. But Ana Nyi Munajiwa a person who needs no introduction. Ah, PLO Lumumba is in the house. Thank you very much, Dr. Kingori, for Karibu inviting sana. me. Karibu sana. Asan Karibu. sana. Mm -hmm. I read an article mm -hmm. that uh, in your personal life, mm -hmm. other than just being a proper, a proper lawyer, mm -hmm. that you can defend someone. Yes. You can also defend yourself properly and be a member of a black belt holder. I'm a martial artist of uh, the Shotokan Karate version of the third dan. I've been a practitioner of martial arts since 1975. And you may want to know we are actually with my a friend of mine creating our own art called Niabuntu. It is going to be an art. We are now writing its philosophy. It will be an art that borrows from Kung Fu, borrows yes. from Kempo, borrows from Jiu Jitsu, Voros from different art, and, and uh, we think that it will near. In fact, is uh, we have taken the name from Ubuntu and near Kuna Nia, so near Ubuntu, the will ah. to do good. That is going to be our art. You'll see our G is is black. Our mm. highest belt will be will be red, black for our color and red for our blood. Thank you. Yeah. Before that, <laughs> what wingi, eh, eh, most of the people who yeah. um, venture into martial arts, mm -hmm. <laughs> what inspired you? Eh, in it, is, did someone beat you into martial arts? Not at all. Uh, if you look at some of the leading martial artists, they'll be great philosophers. Bruce Lee was a good martial artist. Uh, uh, Ron Van Cleef of uh, the Black Dragon Schools. Frank Dukes. Uh, uh, and and uh, J Wong Jackman. Uh, Jet Li, so these are leading these, martial artists. All this training yes. and suffering that yes. someone goes through to be fit is about philosophy. Absolutely. Siwa tindi uweze kutembea kariyo bangi usiku peke yako. Iyo kiweze utangongo na bunduki. I thought it's for inner confidence. Like wewe ni moto. As in, you've never... Uh, you, you don't even get the urge to test your skills. No, I don't. You just train. Yes. What are you training for? 
to give myself inner peace and discipline. Then, then Basi, I think it's easier to drink alcohol. Because of course, it's easier to drink alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> <Because> <laughs> 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 I've tried is on my training. Mm -hmm. Sijui kwanza before just there I'm, yeah. I'm at the amateur stages. Yes. Mm, I mean form 1 of yes. training. Easy squats. Yeah. The pain you feel. Yes. And then we talk about the different levels of belts in yes. karate. Yeah. Just for inner peace. Oh yeah. So you marry a good woman. There are other methods of getting up. There are other means of getting inner peace than all that training. Training correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. For real, for real. Mm -hmm. There's some confidence you walk with in mm -hmm. town. Mm -hmm. That gives you some yeah. form of peace. I'm a lot. Why, why don't you exploit what you have to live by, by beating people? No, no, no. Not necessarily. <laughs> provocation. provocation. Like you and I say, just so that someone would. Hey, just someone would. Just someone, someone would. You've never found yourself self defense. Mm -hmm. No. jipata so all your training ni anini? Ni kujipa ile nidhamu. Nidhamu. Umejua jambo la muhimu sana ni nidhamu. Ni akupa wengine nidhamu. Sio wewe. You know, you know Dr. Kingori. Yes. You 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 sound like a street fighter. Where, where did you grab it? <laughs> <laughs> Unataka noma. Na ah shule yako iko wapi? Shule yako iko wapi ni kuje kidogo tu. No we are, we are actually we want we are looking for a space because yes. we are now trading in in houses. We train individual training. Okay. But once we gather a few people from our own because this is a new system and we want to start from a philosophical standpoint. Yes. So that ukiingia kule katika kufanya mazoezi useme ni, ni ya kupiga watu ni kujipa nidhamu na pia inakutarisha kwa kujihami mwenyewe kama jinsi ulivyosema yes. ikiwa kuna kasheshe mahali yes. na mtu amekuletea kile ambacho kwa kwa nani kwa sheng tunaita noma basi pia unaweza kumshughulikia mwenzako kwa njia inayo style just in case yeah, bas. na kuna watu kwa training hapo kwa individuals kuna mm. mtu amekula motura excess mpaka ukimwona unamwambia tu awe waenda tu ununue bunduki na yeah, kuna watu kama <laughs> <laughs> We are almost going for years. Uh, Tukiambiwa, request, let a PLO, tunete PLO, tutafutie PLO. Asante. But we found you for the perfect topic yeah. for you. Thank you very much. Yeah. We've been thinking with my team and mm -hmm. we've been observing Kenyans in general. And we've noticed something. Like corruption is convenient for us. And you, um, you have, you've been the head of the anti-corruption commission. Mm -hmm. So you've interacted with the beast one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. So is it very expensive to be an upright citizen. You know, at one time I said that Kenyans identify corruption. They okay. condemn corruption. They condemn it in churches. They condemn it at funerals. They resent it. They think it is a bad thing. But they participate in it. And there are people whose lifestyles are defined by it. And it is therefore very convenient, as you've rightly said, for people to engage in petty corruption. Take, for example, if somebody is arrested for a traffic offense, the pen penalties are such that uh, you will be taken to a police station, you will be detained if it is on a Friday. And many people therefore say, why don't I give the police officer five shillings and save myself the pain? so that there are circumstances which feed the monster of corruption. Okay. And secondly, our social acceptance of corruption is very deeply rooted. It is a country where we say, we say ni muizi wetu, ameiba tunafahamu hivyo, tunatambua hivyo, lakini tunamshabikia kwa kuwa ni mtu wetu, tunamshabikia kwa misingi ya kikabila. Hilo ndilo tatizo tililo nalo. Okay, sawa sawa. So hiyo ni njia ingine ya kusema, system ina support corruption. Mm. Corruption has the goodwill. No, I think that would be too harsh. It would be proper to say that the circumstances and the environment that exists in certain circumstances create a fertile ground for corruption to thrive. Okay. It is not true that the system supports corruption. Okay. The system as system is a system that has resented corruption and has enacted legislation and has created bodies that are specifically designed and mandated to fight corruption. But remember that when you create KCC, when you create ESCC, it is not possible for those bodies to fight corruption without the assistance of the population. 
So it is the population that must resent corruption. But how can the population resent corruption if uh, the population can do simple mathematics? Mm -hmm. As we gave an example, uh, you've been arrested on a Friday for a traffic offense, and um, you do the math. That means if you go in, Kikubali Kwenda Station, you stay in till Monday so that you can see a judge, and you can get to be taken to court, and then get a fine of probably 10,000, 5,000. Whereas, here's an opportunity where you can part with 500 shillings and go scot-free. You've saved uh, corruption thereby uh, giving that 500. If you do the math, come on, you've saved 9,500. That is not how to look at it. Let me give you a personal example. It took me three years to obtain a driving license. Three I went years. to several driving schools and they told me, that I had to pay an element which was undefined. And I said, what is it for? They told me it is to be given to the train. I asked, is it a bribe? If it is a bribe, I will not pay it. It took me three years to get a driving license because I refused to pay. And that was in 1989. I was very young. I'd just graduated from the law school in 1986. It took me five years to get electricity in my rural home. I was asked to pay 1.2 million. I refused. I ended up paying 134,000 shillings because I was prepared to wait. Okay. So Kenyans at an individual level must make a decision that I'm not going to participate in corruption. I'm not going to drink from the poison chalice because, as Nyerere used to say, Rushwa ni kama kula nyama ya mtu. Okay. Ukisha kula mara moja, basi utakuwa ni mshiriki. Kabisa. Mm. That's an interesting fun fact mm. that your driving license is one year shy of a KCSC certificate. <laughs> it did. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very nice way of putting yes, it. Yes, your driving license is <laughs> meant a high school. But, <laughs> but um, is, if th that spirit, it sounds very easy. But sometimes you find yourself in a situation, say like a passport. You get a job that requires you to have a passport like instantly. Someone who's never even dreamt of going out of the country. The procedure takes, uh, say, two months to get a passport in your hand. Then here comes someone who can offer you the same passport at 10,000 shillings. Say if your trip cannot wait for, two for, for the two months, the 60 days. Then you do the math. And uh, you think, as a Kenyan citizen, who needs an opportunity? D doesn't that, does that put you in the same No, position? Dr. Kingori, that is where I, 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 I want to say something that I think is very critical. If you create a system, and it's easy to do so, you go to the passport office and you create a system, a section that allows you to follow the normal process, which is 60 day. Okay. You create an express system. And what you ask people to do, if you want your passport to be generated within one hour because there is an emergency, if the fee is 10,000, pay us 20,000. And it's normal, is regular, and we'll get you the passport. On the system? Yeah, it, within the system. We simply charge you for wanting us to work a little faster. And this is what happens in many countries in the world, particularly in the Western world. You yes. simply have systems that allow you to pay a premium in order to get hastened service. And we can do that. Ah, so the mm. government is not taking advantage of the loophole Absolutely. that other people are exposing. Absolutely. You create systems such as I've talked about, which reduce, eliminate, and or minimize the opportunities for people engaging in petty corruption and theft. If okay. you do that, you'll discover that corruption becomes the exception rather than the rule. And okay. that is where we need to go to. Sawa, sawa. Let's imagine a corruption-free country. Mm -hmm. uh, one time, there was a bite that really went viral in the country mm -hmm. that the, as the business environment in Kenya is as uh, difficult, is so difficult that becoming a billionaire is impossible. And that if you have anyone who's a billionaire in this country, they are automatically a thief. They must have stolen at some point. Would you agree with that theory? Not necessarily. There is a sense in which 
the billionaires we have in this country, and I think it's my friend Manyora who said yes, that yes, uh, during a debate, he said that if you are in this country, if you are a billionaire, then you are invariably a thief. There is merit in saying that, but I'll qualify in a short while. If you look at the bulk of our so-called billionaires or multimillionaires, there is a sense in which many of these individuals, if you look at their legitimate income vis-a-vis -vis the things that they own, you will discover that they are engaged in grand theft. A friend of mine from Liberia, Boima Fanbule, calls it theft on an industrial scale. But I said there would be a caveat. <laughs> there are people that I know in this country who work hard. Yes. They are silent. They have been slogging for years. They are few and far between. Many of them are not in politics or in public service, but they are there. They are few legitimate billionaires in this country. I came across a study about mm -hmm. Norway, which mm -hmm. ranks at uh, number seven uh, in the list of uh, Transparency International, I believe, yes. um, as the least most corrupt country in the world. Mm -hmm. Then someone said, the study I stumbled upon, uh, they were saying that Norway there's corruption, mm -hmm. but people don't make noise about it. You see, unlike Kenya, where we break stories in the media about how money has been stolen, they keep it to themselves. So uh, ideally, Mtuaneza argue that uh, Sisi, we are successful in corruption, <laughs> Sababu Sisi ni wadaku. Uh -huh. uh, would that be the case? Because no, corruption no. is actually viewed as an African let, thing. Let me tell you, Dr. Kingori, corruption is alive and well. If you talk to the ordinary Kenyan, they meet corruption at a dispensary. They meet corruption when they go to the assistant chief's office, when they go to the chief's office, when they go to the DO's office, when they go to places where there is government service, when they meet the police officer. Corruption is at every corner. Countries such as Norway that you are talking about, individuals may be born and never ever meet a police officer or a government official who asks them for a bribe or creates a situation where payment of a bribe is necessary. Okay. But corruption exists in almost all countries in the world. In the countries that we are talking about, corruption will be at the highest level. The endemic nature of corruption in our country is that if you are to ask 10 people in the last six months whether they have paid a bribe for some service, Perhaps six would tell you, I have. Sad, 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 sad. Very, very sad. Thank you, And sir. the last point I want to say, mm -hmm. going forward, and this I'm saying half in jest, half seriously, it should be the case is that when a person occupies public office, their spouses should be made to know what their legitimate income is. So your wife should know you are earning 300,000 or your husband should know you are earning 300,000. So if you come with a Range Rover, it is the duty of your spouse to ask you, Baba Shiro, this one, how did you acquire it? And oh. if it is not legitimately acquired, Mama Shiro should report to the authorities. Let Otherwise, she is a partner in crime. Let me let you into, in, into something, uh, Professor. Mm. Th that example you just gave, mm -hmm. How would it work if it's the spouse who, if you don't have a Range Rover, they will ask you, why don't you have a Range Rover? We must pray and fast for them to learn to live within their means. <laughs> uh, uh, <coughs> okay, so mm -hmm. then, I recently came across an article of a Nairobi University lecturer mm -hmm. who received a bribe mm -hmm. uh, of 3,000 shillings from a student, and he had been sentenced to three years in jail. Mm -hmm. 3,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a disparity? to encourage people to steal big. You steal enough to pay lawyers, you steal enough to survive, to buy justice. <laughs> Is you say, there's an old Kiswahili saying, ukitaka kula nguruwe, kula alie nona. But let me go back to the question that you've asked. And, and I must think like a lawyer in this regard. I think, think like a lawyer that when people are convicted on the basis of evidence that has been adduced in court, that is the proper thing. So I'm okay. very slow to condemn the judiciary. The judiciary administers justice according to law. And there is a difference between justice according to law and truth. Truth is a totally, is a totally different thing. If they coincide well and good, 
but is justice according to law on the basis of the evidence that is adduced before them. Nashukuru sana. Asante sana. It's been a pleasure having you. Asante sana, Daktari Kingori. Mungu wakujalie siku zote. Wendele kuchapa kazi nzuri hii. Na wewe pia. Asante, inshallah. Shukran jazila. Hey, maze, na juo muna complaining vile time ya weekend edition ni short. But there's a solution, maze. We are extending this conversation with Professor P.L.O. Lumumba to Nation FM 96.3 from 10 to 11 a.m. on Monday. Tuendele na history. Niko na maswali mobs anda kumuliza. In the meantime, that's it for the weekend edition. See you next week. My name is Dr. Kingori.